What's going on everybody? I'm here to talk about this bike. This is a Trek Checkpoint ALR. It's the 2019 model. Um, it's made out of aluminum and it's paired with a carbon fork. On this bike, I'm running a set of Zip Course 30 wheels, super light aluminum wheel set, sturdy enough for the trail riding that I'm doing on this bike. I have a set of 42 WTV Resolute tires, 700 by 42. What makes this a weird bike build? I think it makes sense to talk about how I got the bike, uh, how I built it up first, and then how it ended up in this configuration that we see here. So when I first got the bike, I had it set up as a single speed. I really wanted a single speed gravel bike. Realize I'm not strong enough for that in Maryland. Uh, the hills here are super punchy, especially on if you're doing a lot of single track or trail riding. So when I decided to put gears on it, I didn't want to redo the whole drivetrain in case I want to switch it back and forth between single speed and geared. Right now, the way I have it built up, I have these Praxis Works Alba cranks. They're matched with a absolute black 34 tooth oval chainring. But if you're riding like a normal chainring and then you go to riding a bike with this oval chainring, you notice it in the very beginning and then you don't notice it at all afterward. In the back, I'm running an E13 946. It says it's a 511% gear range cassette. one long cage rear derailleur. I'm running the same brake levers that I had when I set this bike up as a single speed. And the way that I'm doing that is that I actually hacked together a flat bar shifter um, from the SRAM Apex One group. What I did was I cut the clamp off and I used this Paul Components adapter that's actually meant for mountain bike derail or mountain bike shifters, but I'm using it with the Apex One shifter because I cut the clamp off and luckily the uh, hardware works together. I'm running some Yokozuna Motoko cable actuated hydraulic disc brake. Basically it's a cable actuated brake so you can just use like a normal brake lever. Um, but when the cable pulls, there's actually a hydraulic piston inside that, that clamps on the rotor. I have these PNW handlebars. They're really wide, really wide handlebars. Um, and a, a traditional road or gravel drop bar might be like 42 or 40 or even less centimeters wide. So when you do widen your handlebars, you are supposed to shorten your stem. Uh, PNW recommends that every two, two centimeters wider, you should shrink your stem by one centimeter in length. At first I was running it with a 45 millimeter stem. It was a little too close to me and it also changed the handling of the bike a lot. It was very noticeable. So I threw on this, it's a 60 mil road stem by Zip and it's improved the handling a lot. Um, I think I could even go one centimeter forward with a 70 mil, but right now I'm happy with the 60 millimeter stem. I'm running a Nittany Mountain Works top tube bag. It actually bolts into the frame. There's a lot of mounting points on this frame. Um, so you can run a bottle cage under here, you can run a top tube bag, you can actually shift your cages, and then you can also use three pack mounts on the floor. I love this bag. I have um, just like tubeless repair parts, and sometimes I'll throw my wallet or a snack in there. And then I always use this Roadrunner frame bag. I have it on, a, I've had it on a lot of bikes. Right now it's living on this bike and when I put it on a bike, it never comes off because it's so convenient. Last bit is just the, I use a Shimano SPD um, two bolt pedal. And so that's the bike build. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Do you ever feel like you're getting ready to go do something and then you're like oh it's gonna take me a second to get out but it ends up taking 20 minutes i feel like that's the way it is for me every time i go out and ride my bike i'm always oh do i have enough water do i have enough snacks am i gonna be too hot am i gonna be too cold so you can never be too prepared when you're going out for a ride but also sometimes it's just worth it to get outside so i finished up some work earlier and today is just like one of the nicest days that we've had this whole year I think it's 70 degrees out. I figured it'd be a really good day to come out and just to get some riding shots and, and finish off this video and vlog. I might try some stuff that's a little difficult for me, uh, but I just want to show that this bike is super capable.
film this little line that I do sometimes. Basically, it's a really steep downhill and then a pretty sharp left turn and then you gotta climb a pretty steep hill. But I've never tried it on the gravel bike and I wonder if it's gonna be difficult or not. I am genuinely happy about that. I think that's it for riding shots today. Sun's going down. If you haven't already, please give this video a like or subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be posting more bike content, more vlog content, and some dog content. I think you guys are gonna enjoy the next Weird Bike Wednesday, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.